In the last episode of our new series with respect to examining some of the ramifications of non-DEET repellent formulations and some new substances that have been coming forward here recently, we talked about nutcatone and the future for it with respect to repelling mosquitoes. What we did look at with nucatone was uh, it has been around for quite a while in its natural form and it was known for probably 20 years that it did have a good effect at repelling mosquitoes but it's cost prohibitive and that's why we went on to look at what types of alternatives may be more feasible for including nucatone in some lotion formulas for helping with repellency. And just before we get started with looking at vetiver oil as being an alternative, I wanted to just show anyone that may be interested what the nucatone actually looks like as we discussed in the previous episode in its different forms. And so what I've got here is a few samples in front of me and this one here represents and we'll go have a better look at this in a minute this is what happens when you get 98 percent purity in terms of extracting the nucatone from the original source which is usually grapefruit skins and that's why it results in a cost of about four thousand dollars per kilogram then we uh, get to the next form which is 65 to 70 percent and you can see in this that it is a liquid form and what they've done is either dissolved it or they distilled it that way uh, I'm not sure how that process is but we may see on their spec sheets that we're going to look at here shortly what the process was for extracting it and then lastly we talked about vetiver oil and how just like catnip was it depends on your source as to what the concentration of the uh, sorry of the nucatone would be in the EO in this case the EO meaning the essential oil of vetiver and what we'll look at here shortly too is a publication which I finally found which seems to outline that the Haitian vetiver contains as much as 10 percent concentration of the nucatone whereas you'll find other sources of vetiver which they may not make it up over one percent so let's start with having a look at what you can expect to see if you're dealing with 98 percent nucatone and unfortunately you're not going to be able to get your olfactory senses done but it is a very pleasant scent as you probably have read in many other locations so now I'm just going to grab a little bit of this purest form of nucatone which is 90% and it's in a crystal form there and I'll put some of the powder there for you to view and as you can see that's what you'd be looking at and um, I have read that in this form it's speculated that 2% would be a desirable formulation although I did read something in the patent where they were talking about 10% which seems much too high so even at 2% by volume weight you're going to need a fair bit of this to reach the 2% in let's say a 4 ounce bottle
Now we're going to look at the 65 to 70 percent and unlike the previous one this one is in liquid form and um, it's pretty much as you can see uh, a clear amber type of fluid. That is a very nice citrusy type of scent to it by the way very pleasant and now what I'm going to do is put right beside it maybe over here some of the uh, Haitian pure vetiver essential oil which is roughly 10 percent nucatone and hopefully you can see that it is quite a bit more brownish in color and the scent on it to me is a more of a woody scent still very pleasant so we've basically established that perhaps turning and looking at vetiver essential oil as an alternative to the more expensive and purified forms of the active ingredient we could probably uh, use something like vetiver essential oil in order to get some of the terpene content that we were after from the nucatone. So it's still not cheap though. Like here's an example of something that uh, if you search with Google you will bring this up fairly easily and I believe perhaps the bourbon type of vetiver is not the one that has the higher content of nucatone in it and so um, you might want to be looking for the Haitian one. Anyway this is just an example of what you'd be looking at. Um, you can see here that 200 grams of this is $135 which would mean then if uh, you do the math one kilo or one liter is going to cost you around $675. Now the company that we got the samples from that you just saw I did find my notes and from Citrus and Allied for example you have a price of $360 per kilo for the Haitian vetiver but that means that you have to buy 15 kilos of it to get it for that price when you pay the surcharge for downsizing and if you only wanted one kilo it's going to run you $460 for that kilo. Let's just have a look at my uh, worksheet with part of my formula in it which gives me an estimate of some of the costs involved and what we're looking at in this example here would be the over here on the right column is the approximate cost per liter or kg of these ingredients and these first three are just estimates I took off the top of my head because I really didn't have the patience to go back 15 years or 10 years or whatever and start looking through invoices and seeing how much we were paying for all these different things like catnip essential oil, uh, terpenes from peppermint and peppermint. So I just threw some guesstimates in. And beside it to the left in this column is the resultant cost per bottle when I am making a batch of 50 liters of uh, the lotion formula. So this gives me uh, how much of this product goes into that batch and this figure here the one would mean beside catnip assuming a concentration of one percent. So to review I want to put catnip in my formula I'm doing a 50 liter batch I want it at 1% catnip, I'm going to need to put 500 or half of a liter into that batch and the resulting cost 
is going to be a dollar twenty per bottle for a four ounce bottle based upon catnip costing about five hundred dollars for the liter so on with the peppermint terpenes and the peppermint itself and then let's get on to here and I've got the vetiver Haitian one in here at the price that was quoted if I bought one kilo of it from citrus and allied and you can see this is assuming that I used a 2% concentration and I would require one liter in order for this formula to come out to that and so if I did it that way it's going to run me about a dollar ten per bottle just for the vetiver content that's in that bottle alone. Still uh, quite a significant uh, cost overhead for that one ingredient in there. And let's now, for example, just change this over to uh, maybe the new ketone and um, see what we end up with there and so that we know is four thousand dollars and you can see here nine dollars and sixty one cents is going to be our resulting cost for putting the ninety eight percent natural new ketone in there and then uh, how about if we take a look at the other nucatone, the 65% one, and uh, just let me find my notes here. And I think uh, the resulting cost on that one is going to be 2570 per kilo. So let's put that in there. And um, we can see that we're down to six dollars and sorry I had sticker shock there but I forgot that that is correct and so there's no way that we're you're going to be able to uh, build a four ounce bottle where your nucatone content is going to run you uh, six dollars and seventeen cents per bottle and that's where we are going to hinge and wait upon looking at what kind of information we get from the company that is making the synthetic nucatone from the fermentation process and uh, keep our fingers crossed that that is going to come in at a more reasonable rate. It took quite a number of tries uh, over a few hours to finally get this paper to load. It's on a server in South Africa and outlines the research that was done by this candidate who was apparently working on her BSc in engineering and going for her master's. And um, it's the only one that I was able to really dig up that showed me some percentages that were consistent in um, different sources of vetiver depending on where you got them and as I recall it was uh, the Haitian variety that was one of the better ones I think there were only two that came close to 10 percent so I'm gonna have a look through this again and see if I can find that and the link is going to be down below here if you'd like to reference it yourself. So I think the important part of this paper uh, for the purposes of our discussion in trying to identify how we're going to get the most bang for our buck if we buy some vetiver oil and we want the maximum amount of our nuda ketone as possible comes down to how they extracted uh, the EO from the plant and there are basically three extraction processes uh, there's steam which they ref 
refer to here presumably as hydro distillation. Um, they've got SCE, which is basically a supercritical process. Um, mainly, you would probably be most, most familiar with uh, CO2 extraction from uh, cannabis in order to get CBD oil. Now, that is probably one of the most popular ways of that. And then there's solvent extraction. And uh, I think you'll find that for most of the brokers that sell the vetiver essential oil, you should always check first if you're going to source some to make sure that it's probably going to be steam distillation, such as we did confirm that with the sample we got from Citrus and Allied. And that's probably mostly what you're going to find is uh, hydro distillation techniques for extracting it and just don't go for the solvent process both the uh, uh, supercritical process and the steam distillation resulted in 10 percent yields and I think that's mainly what we're interested in for this there's other aspects of this paper that uh, you might want to peruse because it's definitely the best one I found on vetiver and again um, if you can't get it right away, just keep hacking away at the link and eventually it will probably show up. And if it's something you want to keep, just download it at the same time so that you can get it and refer to it any time.